Michael Fitzmaurice. Uh, Grimagot, uh, um, I won't uh, delay too long. Um, first of all, I welcome the opportunity. Um, the referendum took place, uh, Minister. Um, the people spoke, and for years it has been a fairly protracted um, debate um, down through the years, even when we were youngsters. Um, it caused a lot of differences of opinions with a lot of people down through the years. Ireland has changed a good bit since. Um, in when you look back at the votes that was there before, and um, I don't think anyone questions um, the, in the numbers when you look at the vote that it was 67, 66%. Uh, that the Irish people spoke unanimously uh, to remove it from the constitution. Um, and that has to be recognised. I don't think there's a deputy in here that actually doesn't recognise the, the fact of the vote. Um, but it's the one thing I do think that needs to be also recognised, and in fairness to most of the debate, and I was watching it last night, which I thought was the only night that there was some people sort of spared and across at each other, which isn't good in any debate. I think that no matter what side, as the previous deputy spoke about, um, no matter what side you're on, um, people are entitled to different views. And there are still 34 per cent out there um, that, uh, in my opinion, still believe what they believed in, and they're entitled to that belief. And we must recognise that, as well as the people um, that went um, and voted for a yes and we, we have I think it is an obligation on every one of us as public representatives uh, to do that but I think respect is needed on all sides. Um, a few questions Minister. One thing I would like you to do, um, I know that there is going to be a budget put in place um, for the services, uh, for the abortion services, but um, for all women that are um, expecting a child um, I believe that we should make sure that it's free for all if you want to go ahead and have a child or if you're going for an abortion, if that's, where we're, if that's the road we're going down at the moment. Because I think um, people need to be given, as, like now, the choice as, as, as the people of Ireland has decided. And I think that it's one thing that should be done um, as soon as possible. Um, one other thing, Minister, and this is looking at other health services, and I don't want to hear in a year or two or three years' time somebody saying, well, I couldn't get a counsellor or I couldn't get someone to talk to me. I see in mental health services at the moment, unfortunately, we have a lovely glossy magazines of what we're going to do for people. And unfortunately, uh, some people, you know, they talk about community care teams, they don't get what is written on the glossy booklet that out, that's out there. Um, and I, one thing I would ask you to do is make sure that the services are put in place in the line of counsellors or people giving advice. I would ask you to make sure that we don't see this coming in a year or two's time um, with people basically saying, well, this, didn't, this or that didn't happen. Um, another question for you, Minister, is um, I was listening on my way up this morning to a debate on the radio where youngsters, uh, there was actually a person talking about schools and parents and youngsters. They were on about Facebook and they were on about Snapchat and all the different things, and they were saying how parents need to make sure that they keep, they were actually on about bullying as well, and they were on about online abuse, and that parents need to keep tabs on a lot of these things. If there's a scenario of it, and I hope it doesn't happen, but if there's a 13 or 14 year old that um, is, decides that they want to have a, an abortion, wh what is the scenario on that? Because being honest with you, I'm not clear in what I've read through, and I would like uh, you to give us clarification uh, on that. Um, I, no more than probably everyone else, and I'm not going to claim to be an expert or anything, um, would have met the health service professionals. And you talk about local GPs, you talk about you know, midwives, you talk about right through the whole um, different 
parts of the health service, which is many, um, and even consultants. Um, and I'd be tough-skinned enough, but it was the other evening I met them, and I found it uh, touching enough, to be honest about it, that some of these people uh, feel that they're being boxed into a corner. Now, I know that everyone deserves, if someone is going having an, or wants an abortion, uh, they need to, the, the facilities needs to be there. But I cannot understand, like in, in, in a lot of other things that we do, that we don't have a, first of all, uh, a helpline or a phone number, and that in every county, that you, the department would know or the HSE would know all the different doctors and the different uh, places that would be prepared to do that without maybe forcing someone that has for some um, reason um, a belief that they cannot do this. And it was coming across very strong the other night. And I think that we need to work around that because I would be afraid that, first of all, we can't afford to lose too many from the health service. That's the first thing I, I think. Um, there are people that, sh to be honest about it, were would be adamant. There were, some of them were actually in tears when I met them the other night, that they're adamant that they're not going to stay in a service where they have to do it. They don't mind. They're not saying that it, can, that it cannot happen, they're not, above all things. But that they are not forced to do something that's totally against their belief. And I think that we need to work around that um, in case, and I'm not a legal expert, but in case down the line that someone uh, decides that they'll, they're not going to be forced into something or, like, where does it go if someone refuses to do it? We know on the HSE, well, obviously, uh, and in, in you, that you just, for no reason, cannot uh, get rid of somebody. Now, some of these people are talking about leaving it, which is very unfortunate to hear. And these are good, good people, in my opinion. Um, and I think we need to work some solution around that. I think it's very important. Um, you may have other better ideas. I'm just throwing out something there, like that you have a helpline that's everywhere, be it on television, be it on papers online, the lot, and that you just can make one quick phone call and know who's looking after the different count or the who who's prepared to. Uh, look after it in the different counties, and that may be a work on solution. I'm not saying it's the only one. There could be an awful lot better ideas uh, in doing that. Um, and also clarification on the disability side of it, Minister. You spoke before the referendum on that. I think clarification is needed on that. I am not going to um, stay here talking. I'm not a believer, as, as and the, the previous speaker spoke about people um, trying to hold up. I, I'm not into that, um, actually. And it was rightly pointed out that there are ways of doing things if you want to get it through. But I do think that these, um, it is recognised by people that abortion is, you know, and I think that is, abortion is going to happen uh, in Ireland. Um, it will be carried out in wherever the hospitals or whatever uh, scenario you are going to set up for it, um, but I do think that the healthcare professionals needs to be, um, you know, not forced into something, because if that happens, it's not a, it's not a great way of doing it. Um, I would ask you to maybe come back to us on those points or give us clarification on it. Um, I think that it's needed, and um, I am not going to hold up uh, any more of your time. Thank you very much.